Dr. David Sung Kong, director of MIT Media Lab's Community Biotechnology Initiative. Welcome to the Epic Human Podcast. It is epic to be here, Joe. An <laughs> honor to be here and really, really excited. Why don't we start by just talking about your role at MIT's Media Lab? Yeah, yeah. My current job is this sort of resulting flow of many episodes and chapters in my life where Earlier on when I was in grad school, I was very focused on the technical field of synthetic biology, which again, I think your audience is pretty, probably pretty familiar with, but um, you know, it's a larger engineering framework applied to living systems and was developed at MIT in the early 2000s. And so that was kind of my, my PhD work and that whole early arc of my career was very technical focused. But at the same time that I was doing all of that, I was also a community organizer and a social justice activist and an artist. And I remember distinctly, um, there was a time where um, the community organizing that I was doing, we had done, we had this like play that we were doing. It was sort of this, uh, um, a counterplay to the musical Miss Saigon, because there's a lot of kind of racist aspects of that, that play and that musical. And we had created this counterproduction and I printed out some posters at, the, at, at MIT. And I remember like one of the faculty like saw these posters and was like, do not use the printer for this. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. And so it was, it was sort of, I, I got this sort of implicit messaging that, okay, I need to keep my active life like very separate from my technical life that right. I'm going to do this technical work over here and I'm going to do my arts and my activism stuff over here and I just had this kind of mental idea that these had to be separate things and my my lab that I direct now the community biotechnology initiative is basically exploring in a rigorous way that intersection between the life sciences synthetic biology and biological engineering but then connecting that with an activist perspective looking at who does have access to these technologies who has agency to help shape their futures you know for example one of the projects uh, one of my uh, former grad students uh, Teja was working on was a tool called Zapor. It's a, a DNA electroporator. And for those of you that know, DNA, DNA electroporation is a pretty fundamental process in, in a biological engineering and life sciences. You basically create a, a voltage and um, you know it causes a cell's pores to open up and then you can get DNA to flow inside um, by, by applying this, this voltage. And so these, these machines are typically thousands of dollars. And my student, again, thinking about kind of global access, was trying to think, okay, what what type of uh, um, tools out there have high voltage supplies? And one that he identified was a was a fly swatter, so like the mosquito swatter, which is literally everywhere around the world. And then, and again, thinking about kind of modern bioeconomy, a huge part of the question is supply chain: who has access to these reagents? Who has access to these materials? And so we basically figured out how to hack a fly swatter and turn it into an electroporator that was at least as good as current commercial electroporation systems, but about a thousand times cheaper. 